Hi everyone! Welcome to Book Boop, where today I'll be talking about all the books that I read in the month of July. July ended up being a really great month of reads for me. I got through four books, so basically one book a week, which I think is pretty darn good for the amount of time that I'm able to read. But I loved all the books that I read and I can't wait to tell you about them, so let's just jump in. The first book that I read in July was a book that I had mentioned in my Most Anticipated Reads of 2018 video, and that is The Window by Amelia Brunskill. I really, really enjoyed this book a lot. It is a mystery thriller book. If you haven't watched my other video when I mentioned it, a really quick synopsis. It's about twin sisters who are very close but very different in personality. One of the sisters falls and dies out of her bedroom window and the other sister through her grief, she starts trying to find out why her sister was climbing out of her window anyways, trying to find what was going on with her sister and she ends up finding out a lot of things about her that she didn't know. And it was a super intense book. I was a obsessively, obsessively reading this book. When I wasn't reading it, all I could think about was reading it. Any spare moment I had that I could read, I was reading it. I read it so fast because it was so intense and I just wanted to know what was going to happen. I needed to know what was going to happen and it was amazing. I'm pretty positive I heard this is Amelia Brunskill's premiere novel, so I'm definitely going to be looking out for more of her books as they come out because wow, that one was a lot of fun. I love this book so much that in the next video I'm releasing this next week, I'm going to do a full-on review of The Window because I want to be able to talk about it to the maximum amount that I can because it's amazing. And that way if you don't want to hear me blather about it, you can just skip it all together. <laughs> but I highly recommend that you read it. It was so much fun. It was so intense. So good. But let's go ahead and talk about the next book. After I finished The Window, I wanted to keep myself from getting into some kind of like book hangover because I honestly felt so sad when I was done with that book. It was so intense. It was so good. I wanted to know what happened. I wanted to get to the end. But once I got to the end, I felt really sad because I, I was so sad it was over. And to keep myself to getting into a little bit of sort of a hangover in that book, so I jumped into a middle grade book that was my Diary from the Edge of the World by Jody Lynn Anderson. This is a book I had picked up recently in a book haul. I didn't have any specific expectations for this book. I've read some of Jody Lynn Anderson's work before and it was so-so for me. I enjoyed it but I didn't absolutely love it. So I didn't really have high expectations for this book. But wow, this book was so good. Quick synopsis of this book if you didn't watch my book haul video. It is about this coming age story of, for this girl. She lives in a world that's very similar to ours except there's fantastical things in it as well like dragons and other fantastical fairy tale like creatures like fairies and just things like that. And another kind of fantastical thing about this world is that before you die this dark cloud comes for you and basically kind of like sucks you up in the cloud and you're gone. A dark cloud starts coming for her little brother and so her whole family packs up in a Winnebago and starts traveling towards this place that they're not sure it exists or not but it's supposed to be a place where they can be safe from the dark cloud from taking her brother. This was a beautiful story about just we do anything for those we love and this book was really really good. It's in a diary format. It took me a few chapters in to kind of get into it. The first few chapters to me were a little bit slow and seemed a little bit little kitty and so at first I was like oh I'm not sure if I'm gonna really like this book but then the story really grabbed me. It was so emotional. There were kind of like quick little jabs of emotion in this book and then the end will punch you in the gut and just leave you reeling. It was so good. When I finished this book I immediately started telling my husband about it and telling him about the story and why the ending was so impactful for me because I knew he wasn't going to read it so I didn't feel bad just kind of spoiling it and telling him what happened but like while I was talking to him he looks at me and goes are you gonna cry and I said yes I am this book is so just amazing and emotional I'm not ashamed not ashamed I cried I cried at the end of this book. It was that good. It was that good. I highly recommend this book. It was beautiful. It's a little bit of a thicker book, but it reads really quick because of the diary format it's in and because the story really kind of pulls you along pretty quickly. And it was, it was just beautiful. I highly recommend this book. I think you'll really enjoy it. But let's move on to the next book that I read this month. So the third book that I read in July was The Mermaid by Christina Henry. This was another book I had mentioned in my most anticipated reads of 2018. It came out very recently. I believe it came out in June. And this was, this was a fun little book. When I originally said what this book was about in that video, I mentioned that it was a retelling of The Little Mermaid, which I apologize, I was actually incorrect. I'm sorry. It's more of a historical fiction, which I normally don't gravitate towards. So I'm, I'm glad that this book that 
I thought it was a Little Mermaid retelling, otherwise I may not have picked it up. Again, if you did not watch my Most Anticipated 2018 video, just a quick synopsis of the book. The mermaid is about a mermaid. It's about a woman who is a mermaid, but she's also able to come onto the land, kind of like the Little Mermaid did, and she ends up becoming a sideshow in P.T. Barnum's American Oddities Museum, and she's basically the Fiji mermaid, which is a real thing from history. Not that there was a real mermaid for the Fiji mermaid. It was basically like a fake made mermaid that P.T. Barnum was claiming was real. So there was a lot of history in it and it was really interesting to kind of see all these different characters that were truly real people, real historical characters. Christina Henry did take a lot of liberties with P.T. Barnum which she noted at the end of the book. She said that she did a lot of research on P.T. Barnum and knew he had a really big personality but she did kind of steer him more towards like an overly selfish, almost kind of tyrant kind of, not tyrant, but he was just really he was just this really hard person and didn't really care about other people that much. All he cared about was making money. She kind of went in that direction quite a bit just to kind of spur the book to the direction that she wanted it to be. It was a relatively short book, so it really wasn't a lot of investment in time, which I was thankful for. It was an okay book. It was sort of a middle of the road for me. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. This book is kind of the type of thing you would bring with you on vacation or while you're at the beach. You don't have to overly focus on it that much when you're reading it. It's not a huge investment in thinking space basically. The book got a little bit repetitive for me. It was a fun read. It was fun to have this sort of time in history reading about sort of this type of entertainment, these sideshows and things like that from the past. So that was interesting and kind of seeing it all from a mermaid's perspective. So that was kind of fun. It wasn't a huge awesome read for me. It was probably my least favorite read of the month but I did enjoy it. I recommend reading it if you want something fun to bring with you to the beach or on vacation or you just want a quick little read or if you really really love mermaids or really love the little mermaid or things like that then definitely go for it let's go ahead and talk about my next read the last book that I read in July I have truly loved and that was the Queen of Hearts by Colleen Oaks I really truly love this book quite a bit I'm a huge Wonderland fan and I really really love fairy tale retellings I mentioned this one in my book haul video recently this is one that I picked up it is basically an origin story of the Queen of Hearts and man wasn't it I really really love this depiction of Wonderland. It was an extremely dark depiction. Think Tim Burton, but almost even darker than that. If you've seen any of the Alice or the Alice Madness Returns video game, if you played it or seen it or at least know what that is, it's a very, very dark depiction of Wonderland, which I actually really loved. I really loved that. I kind of like some dark twisted books and that one was definitely that. It had a lot of sort of royal political intrigue in it, which usually I'm not that huge on, but I think since it was set in Wonderland and it had that sort of like darker depiction that I really actually loved it. I really enjoyed this book a lot. I wasn't sure whether or not I would but it was so fun to read I really enjoyed this I love this book so much that I went ahead and ordered the other two in the trilogy mainly because I loved it also because these books are gorgeous look at the cover it is beautiful I know I mentioned that in my last video but I don't care also I gotta show you all this this is so cool I gotta show you the inside cover of this book because it's beautiful look at this Look at this, look at the spine and the front. So with these books, the first one has, they all have the same words on the front. The first one has princess highlighted, second book has warrior highlighted, third book has queen highlighted. So they're really, really pretty books. I really love the way they look, so I'm excited to have all three and put them on my shelf and have them in my collection. And I also can't, you know, can't wait to read the actual books themselves, the words that are inside the books. I really, really love this book a lot. I really highly recommend this one. It's it's really fun to read. Again, it's a really dark depiction of Wonderland. Probably the only thing I didn't overly love about it, but I do understand why it was in there to kind of spur the story along and to keep kind of this sort of darker feeling of the book. But it did have some sort of sexual crudity in it in that there were a lot of the male characters that saw women as objects things to be used and then tossed aside and not as actual people of importance so there was some kind of like crude comments things like that in the book that I didn't particularly enjoy but at the same time I understood why some of it was in there just to kind of spur the story along and to kind of understand the kind of world that the Queen of Hearts is in and what kind of things that she's facing so I understand what was in there I was 
wasn't a huge fan of that part of it, but I was able to look past that and just be able to focus on the story as a whole. This story was a lot of fun to read if you love Wonderland or if you love fairy tale retellings or origin stories. I highly recommend this one. It was fun. I'd like to make a quick few thank yous before I go. First one is to my incredible sister-in-law, Shelly. She is the one that created the original artwork that's the banner and logo of my channel. She did such an amazing job. She is an incredible illustrator, an incredible artist, and an incredible woman. Below I will leave all of her handles for all her social media and things so that you all can see the rest of her artwork. She's an incredible person and I can't wait for you all to see more of her art. Also I want to say thank you to my amazing husband. He has jumped into this whole booktube thing with me wholeheartedly. He's helped me set up camera, set up lights, edit videos like he has been amazing and I love him so much thank you sweetheart for all your work for believing in me I love you to the moon and back thank you all so much for watching this video if you liked what you saw please do a little book boop on that like button if you really liked what you saw please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so you can get notifications whenever I have new videos posted I also have my handle for Instagram below if you'd like to check that out but thanks again so much for watching you all rock and don't forget to keep reading bye